Welcome to a new video. Let's take a look at some new malicious compliance stories. The first story is called Wonderful Work Instructions. I worked in the logistics department of a fairly large company. My job is to check our system for orders that come in and to arrange the shipping for them. When the orders come in, they include the date that the material needs to be delivered. There are times that our material planning team makes a typo and inputs the wrong date, but it's rare. Our company is huge on having work instructions and standard processes for everything we do. My work instructions say to plan the shipment to deliver to the needed date in the system. There is one material planner who has a history of inputting the wrong date. I had to ask her a number of times in the past to verify the date and she would go in and correct it. There were a few dates that looked wrong, so I emailed her and asked her to confirm. She flipped out, saying that she isn't making those mistakes anymore and I'm wasting her time. She reported me to my manager for not following the process or my work instructions. He flipped out saying I'm going against our lean company culture and that I will be written up if I go outside of the process again by emailing the material planner. A month or so later I see an order come into our system. It was a huge order with a combined weight of 30,000 pounds. I checked the need date and it needs to be delivered in 3 weeks to Colorado and it's currently in India. I know what project this is for and the need date definitely isn't right. This stuff has at least 2 months before it's needed on site due to build delays. The material planner never updated the needed date to reflect those delays. So what do I do? I checked the work instructions my boss wrote. It says that if an order can't make the needed date in our system via ocean then it needs to go via air. I sure as heck am not going to email the planner to ask for verification after what happened last time. So I get in touch with our logistics company. They say it's going to cost close to 100k to fly the material from India. That's 90k more than shipping it via ocean. I set it all up and once it gets loaded on the flight I send the material planner the documentation. It wasn't even 2 minutes before she calls me, flipping out. I tell her I planned the shipment to deliver by the date she requested and there is silence. After a long pause I say, is there anything else I can help you with? She hangs up and my manager calls me, also flipping out. I tell him I did exactly what he told me to do and I followed the instructions he wrote. He told me I should have known better and that my job was on the line because of this. But this was false. Actually his job and the materials planner's job were on the line because of this. I did exactly as I was told and was following the company culture. HR and upper management launched an investigation and I'm cleared of any wrongdoing. I was specifically instructed to not go outside of the work instructions my manager wrote. The material planner is written up. And my manager gets in deep trouble because he forgot to add an approval process for shipments over 15k to his wonderful work instructions like his manager has asked him to. I left the company a little while after all this happened. The next story is called Customer Wishes. About 5 years ago I was working for a cable slash home slash ISP company in a support for the frontline staff role. Part of this was faking being a supervisor, so the actual supervisors don't have to be verbally abused. A garbage system, I know, but what can you do? I get a call from a frontline person telling me this guy, let's call him Kyle, had asked to speak to someone about his free rental properties. I take the call and get on the phone with the guy. Hi there, thanks for calling. Yeah, you said that I wouldn't have to pay for long distance on these free accounts. Oh, well, let me go have a look at the notes on the accounts and... No, you will cancel my services at all free places. I just need to look at the notes written on your account too. No, you won't. If this is the service you are providing, just cancel them all. And here is where I start the malicious compliance. I need to make sure that he is in fact the guy who can cancel these services at all free accounts. I asked him when he would like the services to stop. Why are you still asking me things? Immediately. Okay sir, I just want to make sure you are asking me to cancel all services, phone, cable and internet. Kyle starts with a series of swear. Yes, all free services at all free places. Now I should point out that it was pretty close to midnight and these places being rental properties on a Friday night probably had people living there. Also it didn't seem that he lived at any of them. So I went about through each of the free accounts and shut down the services, the phone, the cable and the internet. Now before anyone says, oh you took their phone away, that's dangerous. Well you can plug a phone outlet into anywhere. Even if it doesn't have service you can still call emergency services. I went through and told the system to shut everything down. It also gives us the option to immediately stop the services from working. 
So I told it yes. Now this meant that everything stops at the properties at once. Everything immediately. No more watching TV, no more looking at memes. And if they were on a call, it would stop immediately. I can only imagine the series of panicky texts and cell phone calls that guy had that evening because everything was shut off. The next time I was at work, I checked the notes on these closed accounts. I found out that the tenants had called in and were told the services were cancelled. This was followed by notes from an actual supervisor, because if you get loud enough, the real soups have to do their job. The notes said that after reviewing the call Kyle had with me, they felt I did exactly what the customer had asked and there was nothing else we would do. Turns out Kyle was mad at me for following his directions and then got his tenants to call him in rage after midnight about how nothing they had was working. The last story is called School Dress Code. I was almost 18 in my senior year of high school and I was, and still am, super into fashion. I got this great skirt that was admittedly short but still pretty clearly within my school's dress code. Of course, I had to show it off, paired with a completely opaque pair of black tights and some sturdy boots, not an inch of my actual leg could be seen. I stepped out of the car as my dad dropped me off and stopped to straighten my skirt. The closest administrator, gonna call her Miss Bell, took this for me trying to make an inappropriate skirt passable enough to walk by her to my first class. And she wasn't having it. She immediately and not very nicely told me that I had to go change into scrub pants provided in a place we had called the Choice Center. This was also where kids who misbehave get sent for in-school suspension or detention. And it's called that because it's where you go to deal with the consequences of your choices. I asked how it was out of the dress code and demonstrated that it was the right length. She refused to elaborate and threatened to write me up if I didn't get going. I arrived in the choice center and explained what had happened. The male administrator looked me up and down confusedly and told me I was fine. He sent me to my first class with a late pass and no scrubs. I guess he talked to Miss Bell. Or maybe she just really had it out for me. But not sooner than 15 minutes after I arrived in class did my teacher receive a call from the front office. You guessed it, it was Miss Bell asking for confirmation that I had changed. My first period teacher knew nothing of the morning events and told her no, I hadn't changed. But also that I didn't need to as I was within the dress code. That wasn't good enough, Miss Bell sent someone to escort me to the office to meet with her personally. I made my way into Miss Bell's office where two other administrators were present. They didn't say a word while I was there, they just spectated. Miss Bell informed me that I had interrupted the meeting she was having with them by not complying earlier or something to that effect. I told Miss Bell that my outfit had been approved and I didn't have any scrubs to change into because they weren't ever given to me. She didn't buy it. And so here's the malicious compliance deal waiting for. She insisted that I had scrubs in my bag to change into. She wouldn't look into my bag when I opened it to show her that I didn't. She told me, verbatim, to take off that skirt and put on the scrubs from your bag. And give me the skirt for safekeeping so I know you don't put it back on like you must have already. She told me I was wasting her time. I widened my eyes and dropped my backpack, feigning surprise and innocence. I raised my voice an octave. You want me to undress? You want me to take my clothes off and give them to you? Great choice of words, Miss Bell. Without giving her a chance to respond, I unzipped the skirt and took it off right there. I had very little shame and a pretty strong distaste for authority. And my tights are completely opaque anyway. Keep the skirt, I'll wear this. I handed it to her and she stuffed it in her file drawer. Needless to say, Miss Bell wasn't a fan of my shameless stripping in her office. She demanded that I put my scrubs on. And again, I reminded her I didn't have any because I was confirmed to be in dress code before she took a third of my outfit. I asked if she wanted me to take the tights off too. Of course, she said no, but that I couldn't leave her office until I was in dress code. One of the other administrators had excused himself as I started to unrest before. So I plopped right down in his chair. I can't leave until I'm in the dress code which you took me out of. Sounds like an easy first period. Great, then I'll be on my way as soon as I get that skirt. Unless you want me to walk out of here and let them know you would rather I wear this. I got my skirt back eventually. On my way back to class, the secretary, the only personable administrator, told me it was cute. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. I hope you have a great day. Bye bye.